In this series of videos, we've been building an app that's similar to Brick Breaker. And in this video specifically, we're going to go over laying the bricks on the screen when it's initialized, the gameplay screen. All right, so first we need to set up a few variables and we're going to use local variables and we're going to name them X and Y. All right, so our X and Y will start at 0, 0, the top left corner of our canvas. And this is just going to be the location where we want to set our brick. All right, so as we move from brick 1 through 10 in our list, we want to increase X and Y accordingly so that our bricks are laid out in rows and potentially columns as well. Okay, so we can go through and use a for each loop and so we want to say for each brick in our brick list we want to set some properties All right so if we go again to our generics because we don't know the actual bricks name it's not brick one brick two it's a, a non-specific brick we want to use our generic blocks and set the X and the Y of the brick as well as setting the enabled invisible property. <clears throat> so this will set the enabled visible X and Y for each of these bricks and we put the brick in the component because that's the sprite that we want to set. All right now the enabled and visible are simple sets to true all right because they were invisible and now we're and disabled and so now we're going to set the x and the y to essentially what is the current x and the current y. Okay, which means we have to update the X and the Y every time we set a brick. Okay, so we're going to simply say set X at the bottom here, right below we set our properties before we go to the next brick to the X's value plus some amount. And in this case, we're just going to lay it out in columns and we'll go over some alterations uh, shortly. Right? So we want, again, the generic component, but we want the width. Okay. Oh, so that was set. Sorry. We wanted to get the width. So image, grab the width. the width of the brick. So this adds the width to X. That means that our bricks are going to be right next to each other. Okay. If we want a little bit of space in between them, we can do some addition or uh, multiplication. And specifically, we can get some randomness in and we want to go through. So I've pre-written some blocks here, right? We've seen all of these. We wanted to set, we could also use the move. Okay, right? So setting the X and the Y is the same thing as moving to a specific X and Y. All right. So that's the same, two different ways to do the same problem. And we wanted to set enabled, right? So here we see changing the X, right? Instead of having a width, one width, we're gonna actually say, okay, add a random number between 1.25 times the width to two times the width, right? So there'll be between one and a quarter to a full 
brick of space in between each of the bricks. And we randomize it just to make it a look a little more visually appealing so that they're not all stacked on top of each other. Okay, you can certainly remove the randomization and simply say like two times and that will put them all in nice neat columns if you want. Okay, and then we have to also set the Y, but we only want to set the Y if we've gone too far. Right? We only want to set the Y if we've gone beyond the width of our screen. Okay, So we want to check if our Y is too small. So like I said, I pre-wrote some blocks. You don't need to see me drag them all around. We get the current X, and if it is, we add the width, right? So if what we're currently at plus some amount of width for the brick is too big, right? We want a comparison block. If this addition is too big, so our x value plus the width is larger than our canvas width, that means that our brick will start on the edge, right edge of our canvas, so we won't be able to see it, which means we need to move down to the next row. Right? So we've laid out row one and we've reached the edge of our canvas and we need to move to row two, essentially. So in that case, what we're going to do is take x and set it between 0 and the width of one sprite. Okay? So we're moving x back to the left side of the screen within one width of a sprite. Right? So it doesn't always stack on the left side. Okay? And then we're going to move y to the current y, right, plus one and a half times the sprite height, okay? So one times would st stack these sprites right on top of each other, okay? One after another, top to bottom, okay? But one and a half leaves a little space in between each of the sprites. So that allows us to move down some amount of y. So now we're all the way back at the left and we're down a little bit and so when we go to the next brick and we set our properties of x and y we'll be at that next row visually. Okay and so that's how we go through and set our bricks up and that's lay bricks. So at this point we should have a bunch of bricks on our screen that are enabled and visible but and laid out but they don't actually interact with the ball. 